So the food garden is given given back. All that work that we have put into it since the first of the year, planting, buying our seeds, getting the garden ready, cover crops, and all that. Now. Weeding, weeding, hoeing, watering, planting, sweat, tears, and I know. yeah, it's hard to keep up. Here we are, and it's giving back. Here we, are. we took a little trip, come back. Took and a little trip, and boom, 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 boom. Anybody wants to look at my TikTok on our trip? Somebody might have caught some fish. We went on a little fishing trip to Venus, Louisiana. Got away for a couple of three days and uh, had a good time. Caught some red fish. I caught the most fish. That's subjective. That's well, subjective right there. I'm not sure about that. I, you're in the top, but I'm not sure. Well, maybe you did. Maybe you did. Okay. Maybe you did. Flowers. So flowers are coming in because we always intercrop flowers within our vegetables. So flower of the week. Flower of the week is orange zinnias. zinnias. Is that not beautiful. just beautiful? And they're like different color of oranges. Mm -hmm. Yep. Wonderful. Wonderful. <laughs> Let's welcome everybody. Welcome to the Row by Row Garden Show, best day gum garden show on the radio and the internet as well. Thank you for joining us this evening. We're talking about all things gardening, but we're doing a dive into corn because we just got through harvesting our corn yesterday and we're doing a, we're gonna talk about corn. A lot of different things about corn, but we're gonna to try to bring it full circle there, give you some good information that we learned this year. We've been growing corn for a long, long time. And, and we did corn about Five or six episodes ago. Yeah. This is different. So yeah. stay tuned. Yeah, this is a little different. We're going to share with you maybe one profound thing that we learned this year, which I thought was very weird to me, but it was a good thing. Mm -hmm. So uh, we're going to talk about that. What have you got going on in your garden, Mama Hoss? I got cucumbers. I got peppers. My peppers are just going crazy. Yep. And uh, so I'm cutting them up, saving them for some salsa. I've got some, uh, I flipped some of my pouches. I've got some green griller squash. I got some delicata growing in with the old sunflowers. My watermelons planted in with the strawberries, doing pretty good. That's just about it. Oh, my green fingers okra. Mm -hmm. And dang it, I meant to bring one um, in my container garden. Are yep. doing really well. For you that do not know, Mama Hoss does raised bed gardening and container gardening. And she has her own garden down at the house. And I do the garden on the flat, the bigger garden up in my spot. Mm -hmm. We have two different gardening spots. And there's two different garden methods. Raised bed container versus my in-ground. How's yours doing? Mine is doing rather well. Everything, we're in the middle of that cycle now. So I got lemon cucumbers coming on. I've grown those last year and I've had... I'm probably as excited about that as I am anything. There's lemon cucumbers. I don't grow a lot of them, but those things are delish. It's a kind of a novelty type thing, but I just look forward to them every year. Green beans, you picked for the fourth time? Yeah, fourth time yesterday. Actually, Which I think is going to do them. I actually gave them to my mother. She, uh, some rabbits ate her green beans. Mm -hmm. So I'm sharing. Hoss green blaze. Green beans, I that's a mouthful. I mean, that was still some blooms and putting on. The vines still look good mm -hmm. to me. But anyway, four pickings off of green beans pretty good. Mm -hmm. So we're satisfied with that. We got squash, 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 squash. And we got uh, watermelons. My watermelons grow. I'm growing, you're growing watermelons in a raised bed. Some seedless. I'm growing watermelons, some yellow doll and some sangria in bigger plots. Mm -hmm. I'm telling you, we're gonna have a lot of watermelons. Watermelons are doing good because we're having a dry year. Watermelons for us tend to do better in drier years. We don't have as much disease pressure. So therefore, everything looks good. And my strawberries are still doing good. Strawberries are still looking I well. Thought, yeah. I thought by now they would have played out. Yep. Still doing good. Still doing good. Not as, I don't think they're as sweet as they were in the beginning. Yep. But they're still doing good. So our sweet corn plot we harvested yesterday, and that's what we're going to talk about today. I'm still tired. Yep. So, and the uh, okra's coming in. I got cow horn okra coming in. Yeah. Jimmy red corn starting to tassel out, and it's going good. One thing I do want to talk about just for a minute here. This is my first tomato of the year. Ooh. And this right here, folks, is called a, oh, we did there on the camera, on angle. This right here is called Pink Delicious. 
Now, if you look at this, and I'm going to show another one up here. Now, you can't buy this, right? Uh, I'm not going to say you can't buy it. I'm I mean, from it. us. No, we don't have this. Right. Is, this is a trial variety that we're trialing here. Now, see how ugly they are in the back side there? So your first inclination tells you that this is an heirloom variety, correct? I thought it was. What this is, this is a variety that is a hybrid that was bred to look like an heirloom. It's so got that gnarly look to it. Oh, See there? Yeah. So it looks like a, uh, an heirloom, but it's actually a hybrid. And it's bred as a hybrid because of the disease resistance. And it has very good disease resistance. I have, I have, uh, I've done well with it. heirlooms have a lot of problems. A lot of problems. So the breeder didn't tell me this, but I'm almost, I did have a long conversation about the breeder, about this variety, but I think this was bred to put into chain stores to make you think you're buying an heirloom and you really wouldn't. So have you tasted I've it I've not yet? tasted it yet. So it's got a good look to it. It is a, well, it's classified as a pink tomato. This variety right here is called Pink Delicious. So is it ready to eat or you're waiting a few days? I was gonna wait, but I think I may slice one on the show today. Yeah, anyway, so this the reddest one. I think that's the reddest one there. But it's called Pink Girl? Pink Delicious. Pink Delicious. Yeah, my biggest, Concern with it is it's going to be flavored. And actually, it's got good disease resistant. Plant has plenty of vigor. Here's the salt. Okay, yep, we don't have any pepper. But uh, my, my concern is going to be does it have the flavor of the heirloom? Because if it does, this may open up a whole new avenue for you guys out there that love growing those heirlooms, but you have trouble growing them for disease. Hey, I'm one of them. I've seen a lot of people come in about they have problems with their heirlooms. Yeah, well, I've had. A lot of disease brought my tomatoes this year anyway, but these I've not. Dang, I wish I had some pepper. Don't need no pepper. That's a big old tomato right there. Now, they, they don't... Ooh, Ooh. They're pretty. They don't make as quite as much. They don't load up with fruit as much as a, uh, as a regular hallucinator does. But uh, they do have a decent amount of fruit on there. But the disease... It's really paid off for you on that. I'll try this one here. Mm. Is it good? Mm -hmm. Not real acidic. You know, it is good. That was my concern, but you know mm. what? That's a good tomato right there. That would be good on a sandwich. It would, wouldn't it? Huh. That may be what you're having for supper tonight. Tomato it sandwich. may be. Mm. Anyway, whoa, we uh, <laughs> that is good. We sent these out to some of our ambassadors to trial Ooh, all over the country. No, well, no, my knife didn't cut all the way through there. <laughs> we sent this variety out to several of our horse ambassadors to grow throughout the country to see how they grow elsewhere. But I'm going to tell you, so far to me, uh, I think we may end up carrying this variety here. If it pans out in other climates as well, this. Uh, this may be something right here. That's good. Yeah, very good. I was mm. concerned about the flavor. I really was. Mm. It's meaty. It is meaty. Very good. Mm. Anyway, that looks pr promising there. Excited about that. Whoa. So we've probably got, I probably got four or five new varieties that I'm trialing. And then I've got, we just got through trialing a variety of corn. And um, so we're always trialing, sending out all over our horse ambassadors. We have about 20 of these people that are located, like I said, throughout the country, different rural climates, trialing new stuff. So when we find something that works, we want to bring it to you, but we want to make sure it works before we bring it to you. You want to taste this corn? I do. So this is a trial of corn. It's called? Seminole Sweet. S Seminole Sweet. I did a bunch of cream corn yesterday, mm -hmm. but I also cut some off as kernels to can that I canned this morning. The first time I've ever canned corn. Um, but I saved some of this out and I fried it. You fried it like a little stir fry or just mm, with some? Some good old bacon grease. Like in a cast iron skillet? Cast iron skillet, yeah. You watch my TikTok, you might can see how it's oh, done. Oh, man. Fried corn. Mm -hmm. mm. I could make myself sick off that. What do, you, what do you taste? Mm. It's good. 
That, that tomato right there, wow. All right, so let's talk about corn. All right, go ahead. I'm mesmerized right now. I'm in a, I'm a cloud here. In a I'm food, in a foody cloud. A food cloud. Mm -hmm. Food fog. Corn. So there's two different mm -hmm. types of corn that we're going to distinguish today. Field corn and sweet corn. If you're new to gardening, I'm going to go over this real quick. If you're not new to gardening, bear with me because some people may not know what the difference between field corn and sweet corn you is. You know, when I was growing up, I think all we ever had was field corn. Maybe. Maybe. I think it was. So field corn is a is is meant is probably around around the it ain't probably I know it's been around the long it's been around for hundreds of years and it was originated down in Mexico and South America, and it is a a corn that doesn't have very high sugar content and it has different uses than what our sweet corn does. It's used for grits and cornmeal. Normally it is dried on stalk down to a 23 to 25 percent moisture level, then pulled up and then ground. And that ground is what they separate out and make different products such as grits and cornmeal and things like that. Now you can't eat it fresh. Uh, what we call the immature stage off the cob. We used to eat it fresh with field peas. Mm -hmm. Right. The, um, purple hog peas. Mm -hmm. A lot of people, if you talk to your grandparents and your forefathers, when they talk about corn, they'll talk about roasting ears and they're talking about eating some of it fresh off the cob. Mm -hmm. That was the the field corn, and I, I do like it sometimes. We got some growing now that I'll eat that way as a roasting ear when it starts coming off as immature. The good thing about that is you eat the immatures, whatever you want, whatever you have left over can dry on out and you can use for cornmeal and grits or whatever. So you like- Or animal feed. So you wait till it's dry on the stalk, mm -hmm. then you harvest it. You harvest it and then you, you shell it. Shuck it and let it dry or what? Well, you can do either way. You can let it dry on the stalk with the shucks on there, or you can shuck it and let it dry. Then you grind, you take it off the cob. Take it off the cob, you shell it. Mm -hmm. And then you can prepare it in any way, such as animal feed. That's all your animal feed is made out of field corn. Or you can do several other things with it. But if you wanted to use it for um, cornmeal or grits, you would freeze it? No, you have to, well, you, you could, you could freeze it as a whole kernel and save it. To you could do that, or you could go ahead and grind it, and then then put it in the freezer. You want to put it in some type of cold storage if you don't have a way to fumigate it, and most home gardeners don't. The easiest, cheapest way to do that is to put it in the freezer for 48 hours, and it kills those weevil eggs, so you don't have to worry about weevils. And you've got what kind of plant? Jimmy Red. Jimmy Red. I like yep. Jimmy Red. So that's what field corn is. Now, sweet corn is always eaten as the immature in the milk stage on the stalk. Sweet corn has a lot higher sugar content. And that's what we've, we've harvested and eaten. That's what most people, when they eat corn off the cob, that's what you're eating is sweet corn. It's normally harder to grow. Uh, your harvest window's a lot narrower there. But that's what you see nowadays. Now, with all this, I'm saying, we harvested every bit of our sweet corn yesterday and we put it up because we was gone and we come back in and it was ready, we had to do it. So I was outside shucking, excuse me, and silking with her mother. Her mother's in her late 70s. My mother just turned 76. And if she's listening, oh, thank you, thank you, thank you. I could have never, we could have never done it without her help yesterday. Yep. So we were sitting out there shucking corn and I just making a conversation with her. I asked her, I said, did y'all always put up sweet corn? Cause we did something that's been handed down to your generation that's just done every year. And she told me that she didn't put up uh, sweet corn till she was grown. Hmm. They'd always use field corn. Then they realized, and this had to be somewhere maybe the fifties or, or sixties. They, start, the they started realizing that uh, what sweet corn was. Mm -hmm. So they made the transition and it got me to thinking, most of our forefathers in the 30s, 40s, and 50s didn't have sweet corn. Now there were some out there, but I'm talking most people was not aware of it or had it. So I think they used the, I would think they used the field corn because maybe they didn't have freezers and a way to, to freeze it mm -hmm. or can it. Mm -hmm. So they used it more for um, grits Mm -hmm. Things like, they could preserve. Right. It makes a lot of sense. I didn't think about that, but it probably is. So 
That just got me thinking, so I did just a little research on some sweet corn, and most of the sweet corn within the last 30 years we've kind of grown accustomed to. But there is one variety that we carry that is an heirloom sweet corn that goes back 150 years, and that's Stoll's Evergreen. So we have one sweet corn on our side that we sell that you can save the seeds from, and it is considered a standard variety, a standard sugar variety there. Uh, it's probably the oldest one that I'm aware of. There may be another one out there. They is some, there's a handful of ones that date back a long time ago, but that was the one that stuck out to me. Now, the one that is the most popular variety of sweet corn, what would you say? Silver Queen. No doubt. Hands down, Silver Queen, when everybody talks sweet corn, that's what they think about. They grow their own corn. Mm -hmm. Silver Queen was developed in the 60s, believe it or not. And that was the staple of what everybody loved to grow and still to this day has a huge following of Silver Queen corn. Mm -hmm. It's also a standard type variety, but it is a hybrid, so you can't save the seeds off it true to variety of every year, year to year. Um, now, Silver Queen has lost its popularity in the last few years to some of these new varieties. Because there's so many new ones out. There's so many new ones out there and there's so much higher sugar content. Yeah. Now, I love the Silver Queen, and you do as well. We grew it for years, mm -hmm. but it does have some issues. Storability Storage. is one of them. And I was talking to your mother yesterday about that because I was explaining to her this variety, and we was comparing it to Silver Queen, and I was telling her how long this would, would store. And she made the point, and I think she's right about this, my memory. She said, Silver Queen will get hard in the refrigerator even after you cut it off. Yeah, Silver Queen, when it's ready, you've got to harvest it, preserve it that day. There's yeah. no waiting. If you wait one day too long, it's too hard. Right. Yep. And uh, it's got so much starch in it. It's very starchy corn there. Very milky. And it doesn't convert, it's, it doesn't convert over as well because it's not as sweet on the end there. Mm -hmm. It has a great flavor to it that we're all well accustomed to and we love. But these newer varieties have some things to offer. A lot of people have switched over to peaches and cream, mm -hmm. modacious, and some of these other varieties that sound real familiar out there. So Silver Queen is not as grown as much as it used mm -hmm. to be, but it is still a, a, one of the most one popular of my favorites, varieties. Yeah. yeah, we haven't grown it in a number of years because it's we keep yeah. varieties new varieties. It's a good thing we didn't this year because yep. we would have messed so, up. I am going to show what we did grow this year. Now this is a variety that was uh, shown to us back during the winter time and we grew it as a trial. We also sent it out to our horse ambassadors as a trial for them to grow out because I wanted to know how it did in different parts of the country. That old pan makes no noise. All right. So this right here is called Seminole Sweet XR Corn. Mm -hmm. It was bred by- It's a bicolor. The, it's a bicolor, but it was bred by the Illinois uh, Seed Feather Foundation, I believe. Illinois Foundation Seed Breeding Program. It come out of that up there. It's a, uh, it's a SH2, so it is a sweeter type corn than the Silver Queen mm -hmm. is. And it's a, a lot newer variety here. Now it was bred for the commercial market. But however, it didn't make the cut in the commercial market, and I'll tell you the reason why. why. So in the commercial market, the one thing that they really love, and they've got to have, is consistency on the ear. So they consider this right here. If you see that part there, that's considered a shank. So that shank right there is wasted space in a wooden box. Mm. So they don't like that shank. So they want varieties that have a very sure. small shank. They also want very consistent ears in length because they have machines that cut them and pack them in those little packs that you see in the grocery store. So ear consistency and being able to harvest that ear for it to break off is huge in the commercial market. This one was, was bred for that, but it didn't make the cut because of some of the shank hmm. issues there. I've never heard of that. However, it is a very good eating corn. And quality, normally speaking, is not a huge thing that they breed for the commercial market. This variety right here come out with very good taste, poor shank quality. So therefore they said it would be great mm -hmm. for the home garden market because the home gardener's not concerned about shank and things like that. So that's how we got it. And it's turned out to be a good variety here, being a bicolor. 
and it has a very consistent ear as you see there and it fills out all the way to the end we had no trouble making a good ear of corn and they are, no it turned out i mean awesome it's very full all the way through and, and all the ears were pretty consistent now we do everything by hand mm -hmm. but if you were using one of them systems that you had to set everything up it would be good for that because the consistency of the oh, cob yeah so it, it turned out to be a good variety for us. It sealed that well, sealed really. I was amazed how well it sealed, which is a big issue for us because, again, we're doing it by hand. It's sweet. It is sweet. It's got a good balance of milkiness, mm -hmm. crispness. Some of that we grew last year was too crispy. It didn't have that milk in there. Right. Another thing, too, is the tight ends on this right here. We had just a handful that had worms in them. Of course, we cut that out. See how tight? The husk is going up. Mm -hmm. That's another attribute of this type of corn. So I want to think just this corn is going to be a little less susceptible to some of those older varieties susceptible. to susceptible. Yep, to corn earworm. Yeah. And what I like about it is, so we were headed out of town last week, and we went up there and checked our corn, and we said, "Oh crap." This was Tuesday afternoon. Tuesday afternoon, we were going to leave Wednesday, be gone to Sunday, and our corn was ready. Mm -hmm. And we're like, well, there's just, we're going to lose it. There's no way it'll be okay in five days. Man, I believe that's sweeter than it was yesterday. Now, this is, I think this is something you picked Sunday. Mm. Yeah. Okay. So, anyway, so we said, we'll just take the risk. So we got back um, Sunday. Sunday afternoon. Sunday afternoon and went and checked it. And it was filled out more, but it was not too hard. Yep. So we went up there and looked at the silks, because this is what we judge our, our corn on, is how brown the silks are. All the silks now were brown. Mm -hmm. So I knew it was all ready. So we got in there yesterday morning, or I say we, I got in there yesterday morning at daylight and started pulling all this corn here. And I pulled it all because it was all ready, which is good because when you get there and get started, you want to pull it all if you can. But what we realized was waiting those few days to letting it wait, which we normally wouldn't have done, produced a lot more corn. Now, normally speaking, if we'd been but here... But it didn't get too hard. But it didn't get too hard. We would have pulled this last Thursday yeah, if we would have been if here. If we had been here. And we would have pulled it too early. Mm -hmm. So by us being gone gave us the reason to let it go to experiment, not by chance, but to experiment with letting the corn go a little bit longer, and it really paid off for us. Mm -hmm. It gave that corn a chance to, to have all the sugars in there to be real sweet and to be filled out to the, uh, the maximums right there. Now let's talk about how much corn we planted. Maybe this will give you some insight on how much corn you need to plant, because I think a lot of people overplant corn. Mm -hmm. What you want to do is you want to plant a smaller patch, but you really want to take care of it and get as much as you can off from that small patch there to utilize your space and everything to get as much bang for the buck. So we planted six rows, 52 foot long. And so that's a, if I'm going to give you the, how big of an area that would be, that would be about 25 by 50, just rough, roughly saying. A 25 by 50 foot plot, six rows, and it produced, as of yesterday, 70 quarts of cream corn. Wait, wait, wait. 60 quarts of cream corn, and I did 10 pints of canned. Okay, so 60 and 10. Yeah. But if you'd, had, if you'd creamed them all, it'd been close to about yeah, 70. Yeah. Okay, so that's... 70 quarts of cream corn there. Now that's a lot off a small area, but we had a real good crop. We had it on drip tape and we poured the fertilizer to it. It never stressed, nor did it never wilt on us because we had the water there for it. We, it took, we started at daylight. Seven o'clock yesterday morning? Well, I was a little bit before you on that one, but yeah. And uh, there was three of us, my mother included. We did stop about 5.30 to eat some dinner, and then we bagged it up. It was 8 o'clock before we got yep, through. Yep, It was a lot of corn. A lot of corn, a lot of work. Usually we break it up in a couple of days, but... We wanted to get through with it. We and it was ready. Time was of the essence. Yeah. So, I planted this on March 1st. We harvested on May 30th. 
roughly 90 days. 90 days to maturity from seed to corn there. If I was going to plant some more for a fall crop, I would plant around the 1st of August. And the variety that I've had success with many times in the fall is one called Ambrosia, which is also a bicolor. That's doing really good for us. So we probably may plant another crop in the fall. If we do, we'll probably eat a lot of it. Maybe. Yeah, just for maybe eating right. and give away. Our main put-up crop is in the springtime. Mm -hmm. For what we look for in a sweet corn is we will look for sweetness, but sweetness is not the overriding factor. We look, we like a sweet corn. We like one that is uniform. We like one that has some cream sip, to it. Has some cream to it. Milk to it. Milk to it, and one that silks easy. One that silks yes. easy is a big thing for us because silk is not nothing I enjoy to do. When Silver silk, Queen normally silks out pretty good, but I believe this yeah. one beats it right here. When you silk 300 plus ears of corn. Yep. Also shelf life. So with Silver Queen or some of the other varieties here, you got about a three day window to get it. This one right here, we had this time a seven day winter. I figured it up this morning. We had seven days that we could harvest this right here and it would have been okay. Mm -hmm. And you could put, after you, after you harvest it, you could put this on ice and you could probably get five to seven days out of it mm -hmm. in the refrigerator. So you're talking about an overall two week harvest time over this particular corn here. This variety right here would be ideal suited for roadside stand. It would, yeah. Yep, that would be a, if I had a roadside stand, that would be the one so I would So is this roast. something you'll carry next year? Maybe. What we're going to do is we're going to continue to evaluate, give other people's opinions that grew right. it in different regions than we did, and we'll look at it and see. So far, it, along with the tomato, is looking good. Mm -hmm. so, we'll Try see. that with the tomato. Oh, man. Combination. A little, a little bacon go along with that? Wow. Well, this could have been bacon grease. Mm. That is good. I'm going in that fog again. <laughs> Brain fog. So for fall planting, when will you plant? Uh, I said earlier, first of August. First of August, okay. I missed that. Now, I think you probably got about a 10-day window there. Either way, you could go on. I'm talking about zone 8, which we're in. You could probably plant July 20th on in to August 10th and be safe there. So there's probably maybe 10, 15, 20 day at the most window there. Mm -hmm. I'm going to try to get mine in the ground first of all. Okay. Now corn is probably the most cons time consuming thing that we do. Would you say so? Yeah. The harvest. The harvest, yeah. It's a whole day. Yep. A lot of people take shortcuts and end up putting up a product in their freezer and everything. They end up throwing right. away. So don't yeah. do that. I mean, I've read a lot of where they would actually just put the whole thing in a Ziploc bag in the in the um, freezer. And if that works for you, more power to you. Not knocking it and do it. Some people shuck it and put. And, and I've done that and it, it's been okay. To me, it just takes up so much room in my freezer, yep. and I need the room for other things. Yep. So we like to cream it, put it up. That way, we won't, and, and you blanch it. Blanch it. Put it in the vacuum sealer. And put it in the and let, and I put it, drop it down in the ice chest and a boiler, let it chill, then put it in vacuum seal bags, put it in the freezer, and then new for this year, and I have to show you because I actually did it this morning. Um, I can some. So I'm going to be interested to see how that works out. Yeah, because that would be a huge benefit if you had a food source area that you had to depend upon refrigeration. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. There you go, folks. Hope that helped you a little bit. We think everybody should be growing corn. I do not recommend growing corn in raised beds. I think you should grow it in squares so it pollinates well and you have enough of it to be able to do something with. Uh, I got a 20 by 20 garden that I'm doing at our beginner garden. And I don't think corn would fit into that. Mm -hmm. It's just not its not worth the effort for the return that you get. Corn's a great thing to grow, but you just need a little room to do it. You need to plant it on the flat and have plenty of room so you can grow enough to make a difference there. Third, excuse me, 25 by 50 foot, 70 quarts. Well worth the effort there mm -hmm. and a day of our life. Mm -hmm. yeah. Now the second most thing that takes the most time is tomatoes. And we'll get into that in probably a couple of weeks. Our tomato crop stops coming yeah. in. All right. All right, corny joke of the week, Mama Hoss. 
I didn't do this one this week. So. All right. So which fish sport loves animals the most? Chickens? Nope. Zucchini. <laughs> Feel free to use our corny joke oh, anywhere no, you may go. Uh, that was a pretty good one, I thought. I had one I think would have been better. Uh, I'll save it for next week. Zucchini. All right, so we're doing an old goat drawing, and this is the deal on the old goat, okay? Within the set here somewhere is hidden is the old goat. And if you find the old goat within the set to our background right here, you comment, you comment below on where on you found video. the old goat was. We put your name in a drawing, and at the end of every show we draw... And we had to get a bigger drawing this week because we a had lot of people found the old goat. Over eighty people comment yep. on finding the old goat. So if you find the old goat, comment. If we draw your name, you send your shipping address in to cussservehostools.com, and we send you a coveted hoss prize. How about that? Uh -huh. So you gonna do the drawing, Mama Hoss? I'll take it either. Okay. You ready? Mm -hmm. Oh, I got two. I got slip one out. All right, Diane Suggs, you are the winner of the old goat drawing. Send us your address, and we'll get you a coveted horse gift sent out in the mail. There. Oh, don't put it back in there. I need to get it to the girls. Up you need to get it. Okay, good deal. All right, folks, look here. Half eaten corn cob. <laughs> We're gonna finish that off when the show's over with. There. Get a plan together on grow you some corn. I promise it's well worth the effort. Now it's time for us to sign off and you get outside in that garden and get dirty.